folks, Bill here, Whirly Bird Video Productions. I uh, actually got a lozenge in my mouth fighting a cold uh, this week. Uh, shooting this video the week of uh, Thanksgiving, actually, so I'm trying to get videos ahead to kind of give you guys an episode a week. So I'm trying to put some short videos together. That way I can come out with them once a week. Kind of little tutorials, uh, how-tos, that kind of thing, over the next couple videos. And then about three or four videos out now, we'll be starting the build of the RV uh, jet, which was from Range Video, if you guys have heard of those. So that's coming out in about three or four weeks. We'll be doing a whole FPV system build review and all that kind of thing. So this video today, what we're going to talk about is a lot of people come up and say, Hey Bill, what, what charger do I need? Well, you got that need word in there. Uh, it's a, a charger. What charger do you want? Uh, what charger do you need? It's like... So radio control, anything, what do you really need? Uh, it's what we want, right? Uh, so anyway, you, you want to get some information down, though, become a little bit educated on what product to purchase, how much money to spend, depending on how, you know, how big you are into the hobby. I, I'm very big in the hobby, so I have several chargers. It's actually a 400-watt uh, dual port charger that I have here. It's about 150 bucks, so it's not crazily high. But some people, if I tell them, you know, $150 charger, like I said, it's not crazily high. They look at me strange, you know. Uh, you know, I've got a Thunder Power 820, uh, I've got uh, access to Hyperion 720s, uh, you know, so I've, I've lots of different chargers, I've tried a bunch. I, I like the new uh, Hobby King touchscreen chargers, which are a, uh, another charger, I can't remember the, the name of it, IMAX perhaps is that charger that makes that now, it's a touchscreen charger, it's really cool, I like that, I've got a 200 watt single port. Uh, you know, spitting out numbers, and that's, that's what people get confused when I was talking about a single port, dual port, and then I talk about wattage. And that's the watt calculation, not the WHAT, but the WATT calculation. So I got my whiteboard up here, and I just want to go through a couple calculations really quick to kind of show you where you need to be at. So first off, think about what batteries you charge all the time. Think about what batteries you may charge in the future, in the close future. Uh, you know, because it's always a lot of people say, well, maybe I should spend money now and go ahead and buy that $280 charger. Uh, like the Thunder Power Charger, you're going to give you know a lot more for, or uh, you know a, a Hyperion Charger up on the upper end, you're going to give a lot more than $149 that I gave for this one. Uh, so you know, do you need that? Uh, well, if you're not charging big six cell packs and you're not you know trying to charge at two or three or four times the cell capacity. So again, there's more numbers. We're going to go over those numbers a little bit with the uh, whiteboard here. Kind of explain that a little bit to you. See if we can't make you understand that just a little bit better. So let's get the camera over on the whiteboard. We'll go over a little bit about the watt calculation and kind of push you down the road in the right direction to buying a new charger. So we need to figure out what type of charger we need. So we need to measure our battery packs. We can't really use this though, can we? Uh, we need to do the watt calculation, figure out, you know, what's the best charger for me that I need. So I mentioned, you know, this is a, a El Cheapo, really uh, high-end wattage uh, charger from SkyRC. I, I, can't, I think I got this at NitroPlanes.com, but uh, I've got a Thunder Power 820 uh, that I got from Horizon Hobby. I really like it. And then I also have a Hobby King uh, X200. And I'd like to have that new X400 double port. So may may actually get that and sell my 820. Uh, but at any rate, so this is a 400 watt times 2. I use some little Velcro straps. I actually put the little red ones around the batteries when they're dead. Just to kind of indicate a, a discharged battery. And then I just put me some Velcro on there. So that's, that's me putting that on my charger. So at any rate, it's uh, times two, so it actually has two ports. I can charge, I don't have this one plugged into anything, but anyway, two different sets of charge leads comes out, two different screens, and so basically this is two chargers, one and two. So it's actually uh, 400 watt times two, but this is saying it's 400 watts per channel, supposedly. Now, um, so I, I think this is probably really more like a 200 watt charger per, per port. But at any rate, we're going to, that's what we're getting to is the watts. So if you're buying a single port charger, that is a 50 watt charger. Because that's what a lot of folks are buying. They're really cheap. Around 20 bucks, you can get that little uh, quad, or the, uh, what is the IMAX B6. And a lot of the guys at the field have got the IMAX B6 Quattros, which are, uh, it's a 200 watt charger, but there's four ports. So they split that 
four times, so it's really 50 watts. So you got four 50 watt chargers. We getting on getting on to something here. We're all about the watts, right? So if we look at, sorry, getting off camera there for a second, I'll get my notes. So we're, we're going to do our watt calculation. Our watt calculation is volts times the amps equals our watts. So volts times the amps times watts or volts, amps, watts. So what that means, so let's just take a common battery that everybody uses, or at least a lot of folks around the field. Flying, uh, you know, uh, 15 size uh, electrics. So, you know, an electric with a three foot wingspan or so. Uh, generally, those are going to use a three cell LiPo. Again, if you got to talk about chemistry too when you're talking about, you know, picking a charger. Uh, pick a charger that charges the chemistry of batteries you use the most time. That's the first thing I said, you know, figure out what batteries you need. But 90% of the folks, they're really looking for a charger to charge LiPos nowadays or lithium polymers. Uh, also, there's some life batteries out there. I use a lot of life batteries on my receiver packs and my bigger gas planes and bigger electric planes even when I'm not running a BEC. So you got to make sure the charger charges that particular uh, battery uh, chemistry. So we're not going to talk about battery chemistry. You guys, I want to assume you guys know what a LiPo is and what a life is and that kind of thing. So we're talking about today measuring wattage to see what type of watt charger you need. <laughs> so if we say uh, the typical is a three cell, and I don't know if that red's going to show up good. I just had that thought. I want to grab black real quick. Three cell, 2200 milliamp hour battery. Now this is this is important, right? I mean, this is how much that's how big the fuel tank is. So you got a 2,200 milliamp fuel tank. You know, it's like a 10 gallon. And so your three cells. It's a, we're talking about lipo, so it's three cells at 2,200 milliamps, which is this is 11.1 .1 volt battery. So I know, yeah, it's 12 volts really, but really it's listed as an 11.1 .1 volts. If you measure it a charge battery, you're gonna get 12 volts. But once you start to pull some uh, amps out of that thing, put it in a load, that's what you're looking at as 11.1 .1 volts. So we know we got the voltage, which is our V here in our first part of the calculation, 11.1 .1 volts. And then we're gonna times that by amps. Now this is 2200 milliamp hour, but uh, what do we wanna charge this battery at? So how many amps do you want to charge that size battery? You know, most of the time it's going to be one times the cell capacity. You know, if you're running 20C, 25C batteries, you probably can, you know, recommend a charge current on that battery is one times the cell capacity. Now, if you're running upper end batteries that say, hey, you can charge this battery two times the cell capacity, three times the cell capacity, oh, you know, 10, 15 times the cell capacity. Whatever the manufacturer says, you, you can safely say that that's probably pretty good. I will say that if you go to the lower end and use one the cell capacity or two times the cell capacity, uh, you know, on a battery that, say a battery that says a 15 charge uh, cycle. So you could go up to a 15 times the cell capacity for the charge cycle. If you'll charge it one to two times the cell capacity, that battery will last you a little longer. Now, it's probably not going to last you that much longer, but you'll probably crash the plane tear the battery up, right? So at any rate, that's the cell capacity. So let's just say, for instance, this is they're saying to charge this at 1C. So that would be 2.2 amps. So 2.2 amps. And that's going to equal, or uh, if we do that calculation really quick, it's uh, 24.42 watts. So we could say 24, 25 watt charger. That's what it's going to take to charge this battery uh, at two times uh, 2.2 amps. So at one times the cell capacity. This same battery, if we want to charge that at two times the cell capacity, let's round, these a round number because a lot of those little 50 watt chargers say they'll charge three to six cell up to a six cell battery at six amps. So let's just say six amps because a lot of folks say, well, I can charge my six cell battery at six amps because the charger says it can't. Here's where we run into problems with that. 
So if I will say two times the cell capacity, you know, I'm actually, it's just two point something, right? But I'm going to round it up. So we got the 11.1 volts times six amps because our battery charger says that it can charge up to six amps. I'm talking about the little 50 watt chargers because they say a lot of times they can do that. Like the uh, one I just showed you over there, shoot, you can go up to 20 amps. Now, can it do it? This is what you got to do your calculation to find out. So if you take your 11 times that, you're going to come up with 66, right? You're going to come up with 66. Let's say, uh, this is so we don't have another 6 on the end. Let's say 67 watts. Uh, keep coughing. So 67 watts. So what's that tell you? If we own a 50 watt charger, one of the little $29, we want to charge this 11 volt battery at six amps, we're gonna need 67 watts. We can't do it. You can set it to six amps and hit go, and the charger may lie to you and say it's putting six amps in there. Most likely it's probably gonna read correctly and you're gonna come up closer to where this is getting close to 48 watts. I mean, 50 watt charger, you gotta think, when they rate these chargers they're rate them at max capacity you're just not, you can run at max capacity all right you're most likely going to tear them up eventually um, so at any rate you could see <clears throat> you know we could charge this at at five amps or four point something uh, at 11 and come up with our 48 you know we'd be really close so let's use another example let's jump up to a six cell battery so if we take I'm going to go ahead and grab another pen here just so that you guys can see what I'm talking. <clears throat> we're going to change gears and we're going to talk about a six cell battery. And I'm going to say a 3000. And this is 22.5, right? Or is it 22.2? It's 22.2 volts. So six cell, 3000 milliamp, 22. We really haven't increased much in the milliamp size, right? Our gas tanks went up 800 milliamps. But now what we've got is we've got a little more high boost on the fuel, right? So instead of 11.1 octane, we got 22.2. <laughs> now the good thing about going up in the volts is generally your amp draw will be less. So generally the higher the voltage, the lower the amp draw. So you can get a little bit more efficiencies out of it but you're probably running a much bigger motor. In this case, like this is be a good size for a T-Rex 500 sized helicopter or a 500 size electric helicopter. <clears throat> now, if we want to charge this same battery, let's say at one times the cell capacity or three amps, then we put in our 22.2 times, that's our volts, times three amps. And what's that give us? I mean, that's going to give us the 66 let's 67 we're gonna round up because we're getting the same output here we're trying to get six amps out of it and here we're getting three so if we wanted to charge this at two times the cell capacity and go up to six amps we take our 22 and I keep writing three for some odd reason I think it's because it's 3,000 milliamps I keep messing up we're gonna take our 22 volts times six amps and that's going to equal what, 130 and change. We're going to say 134 watts. I like to round off. So, <clears throat> if I want to charge my six cell 3000, 3000 milliamp battery pack at six amps, I'm going to need at least a 134 watt charger. Or you're probably going to, going to go buy a 150 watt charger. So, if you're looking, hey, I want a 100 watt charger, you go buy a 100 watt charger, you're not going to be able to charge this battery at six amps but you can easily charge this battery at six amps so write that down and memorize the watt calculation and that'll help you figure out how many watts you need to charge the battery you have at the amps you're wanting to charge at always pay attention to your manufacturers recommendations you know uh, so if your battery pack says on it do not charge more than one times the cell capacity just don't do it Okay, and then lastly, you know, one thing I said is, is planning for the future. You know, should I go out and spend $300 on this Mac Daddy push button touch screen talks to your charger? Because I know 10 years from now, I'm still going to be in this hobby. 
Well, 10 years from now, there's going to be like 15 versions of that charger that's came out since then. I mean, there's really, there's a new version every year, seems like. So if you're you're stuck on a particular brand, you know, stick with them. Most of the brands are very reputable today. They work really good. Underpower, Hyperion, uh, you know, this little Scholar C that I'm using works pretty dang good. I haven't had any problems out of it. Uh, you know, the Hobby King charger that I have works good. I haven't had any trouble out of it. So, you know, stick with reputable names, people that stand behind it, get a little bit of service behind it. You know, go to your local hobby shop, talk to those folks, uh, see what they got, see what they can get, and they can help you and go from there. So, this has been a uh, what uh, calculation video on how to choose your charger. So, thanks a lot for watching. Please give me a big thumbs up. Please rate and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Whirly Bird Video Productions.